everybody. Welcome to TL's Roadhouse. Glad to be back on the internet with you guys. Hope everybody's having a good day out there. We are uh, a new friend that I'm just meeting for the first time. Looking forward to visiting with him, Mr. Zach Toppenhouse. Thank you for having me, sir. Appreciate Man, it. Man, it's such an honor to meet you. I, uh, I've been listening through some of your stuff. We, we have some mutual friends we were talking about yep. just before we started. So uh, Carson Chamberlain and I have known each other for a long time and yep. go all the way back to the Whitley days. You know, yes, He was sir. part of Keith Whitley's group years ago yep. and oh, he actually yeah. produced your new project. Yes, sir. That's really awesome. Yeah, man. And I was I was listening to your stuff. Ooh, you got a lot of Whitley inflections in your voice. I can hear He's some my favorite. I can hear some uh, Ricky Skaggs. Yes, sir. I can hear a little Daryl Singletary oh, in yeah. there. Oh yeah. You know, I can tell why Carson really connected with you, man. There's some <laughs> nice some good melodies, some really Thanks. good, great vocal licks, man. It's just Appreciate really pretty that. stuff. Thank you very, very much. Cool, man. Appreciate it, man. So uh how long have you been in town? Been in town just for uh, three years, at least living here. I, I started before that, I guess, for about two years. I was flying into town uh, for like a week every month, and I'd go stay at Carson's place for a week, and, and he'd set up charge a ride for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting it all on the back end. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but he, re he really was uh, super good to me. Yeah, like you said, he, he produced my stuff, but he, he started working with me. I guess it's been five years ago now, yeah. um, and – Kind of showed me the ropes a lot on co-writing. I had not written a lot, uh, and if I had, it had been by myself. Yeah. Um, and up till then, I probably, you know, had four or five songs I'd let anybody hear. Yeah. Um, so he, he kind of shit the first, first uh, co-writing set up in town was uh, with Mark Nestler. And, of course, I, you know, I know all the, the big, long list of hits he, he he's had and, you know, a bunch of stuff that made me fall in love with country music when I was growing up listening to it. So I was, I don't think I've ever been as intimidated to uh, to go into a room and, and do that as, as that first day with Mark. I, I've never been scared to sing or play in front of anybody, but, like, writing was fairly new to me. And so yeah. I walk in there with those guys. But Mark's a very gracious guys. guy, man. Oh, gosh, he really yeah. is. I mean, it's just so talented and yeah. unassuming and soft-spoken. Yeah. I, I remember one of my early rides. I got hooked up with Dean Dillon, and I remember going yeah. into his office, and he intimidated me so bad. I was terrified of him. And, I mean, and he kind of liked to intimidate you a little bit, too. He does. I mean, Dean likes to do that. I yeah. mean, I've heard a lot of Mess stories, with especially with young artists when they come in. Yeah. He'll try to try to see how far he can push you. Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, Mark's not that way, man. No, he's not. Talking. No, it took, yeah, no time. He yeah. really put me at ease and stuff. He's great. Well, he's written guy. some big records, hasn't he? Oh, Lord, yes. Yeah. So you had a chance to write with him, I'm sure you wrote a bunch with Carson too. Man. Yep. The co-write thing and the, the three-way write things is a really interesting thing. I mean, yes, it is. Especially as a young writer, you learn about structure and, and crafting songs and how to how to navigate melodies and, yep. and looking for those little special moments and things. Mm -hmm. How to not over sing, mm -hmm. uh, where to add those little little tricks in, mm -hmm. and not doing too many in one song. I mean, yep. there's so much that you learn with co-writes yeah, and just the imagery. I mean, I, I think when you sit down and you collaborate with somebody. Being able to uh, share different perspectives and talk about, you know, the same subject where you're trying to get the most imagery out. I, I yeah. love being able to bounce that stuff off of people. 100%. Yeah. So how, how, do you, uh, how do you find that? Um, shoot, I, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I think, I, for starters, I think I'm much more of a melody guy. I think that stuff, that stuff comes naturally to me. And then as far as lyric stuff it's you know me and Carson make a great team together I feel like because he's he's got a list of ideas two miles long oh, yeah. that he's been keeping around for 30 years or something and it's uh, it's funny all the old ones he loves to you know he's got dates by him and stuff he loves pulling it out if we if we get on an idea he'll go back and that this I got this idea back in uh, 1995 and you know or whatever it is and, and he loves pulling that stuff out and he's like I'm glad I held on to it because we finally made it into something <laughs> Well, you know, hearing uh, hearing the stuff that y'all did and and knowing how well things are starting to work for you, knowing that that ninety sound might be coming back is mm -hmm. pretty reassuring to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's it's it feels like for a long time we've been on the edge of like people are wanting something to change a little bit as far as audience. I feel like and uh, and that sort of stuff. I I feel like it's just been missing well, for a long time. And there's so much diversity in country music and yeah. I appreciate all. I mean, I, Same. I, I appreciate people that love and respect the craft of making music 100%. that are, that are passionate about, you know, cause this is not an easy lifestyle. I mean, going out there and touring, it's, it's hard on your family. It's, yep. I mean, as you get to that place where you got kids and things, yep. I mean, the people that you love, I mean, they're the ones that sacrifice the most cause yep. you're getting to do what you love. They right. didn't sign up for exactly. it when you get to that place. So it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge, man. Yeah. So, uh, I think, uh, 
kind of getting in early and, and getting a lot of that stuff out of the way is probably getting yeah. healthy for you. Yeah, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I hear you. But my point that I was making is that I, I really respect a lot of the diversity in country music. Yeah. Uh, that personally is not the, the where I choose to go. Yeah. I mean, I, I can do rock and do a lot of other yeah. things, but yeah. I, I, love, uh, I love the fact that, I mean, I'm hearing a good country production coming back with good fiddle and steel guitar yeah. and open vocals and, yeah. and just all those things. That's yeah. really nice to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think it's fun to just, I'm excited to have a, a, you know, something out on the radio now that is, when you flip to the dial and it's my song playing, you're undeniably on the country station, you know, where the, some of that, you know, music just, it shifts and evolves and, and country lately has been, you know, there's there's much more blurred lines between that and other genres. Oh, yeah. And and that's cool. Like you said, I, I appreciate uh, all the different stuff that's, you know, in the country format now too. But I do think that uh, it feels like there there needs to be something holding it down that when people flip to the country uh, station, it sounds like they know immediately, yeah, I'm here, I'm, I'm at the country station. So it's it's fun to, yeah, put a dang 4-4 shuffle back on so that. I wonder when the last time that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, um, I don't, nobody cuts shuffles anymore. No? And, and all that old Ray Price stuff, yeah. all that stuff really influenced me so much. Yeah. You know, and uh, you, you know, you go back and listen to, uh, like, Clint Black's first record, Killing Time, yeah. and some good shuffle stuff yeah, on that man. record when it came out. And I don't think anybody really even thinks about doing that anymore. You turn no. on the radio and there's so much of it, the same tempo it's saw yep. is right there. Yep. So, uh, Washington State? Yes, sir. What, what, uh, That's where they make all the good country music, didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's right next to Texas. That's right, exactly. <laughs> you get a lot of bleed over there. Yeah. So, what part of the state? You coastal, or you more towards Spokane? No, that, yeah, Spokane. We're about two hours, two and a half hours from Spokane, a little town called Sunnyside. Um, did you ever go through Yakima? can't remember if there's a club sure out there. Or no. Yeah, I've maybe played. so. You know, it's a real weird place to get to to tour. I mean, oh, there's yeah. not a whole lot to route through to get no, there. No, exactly. Uh, and not much to route through to get back. So That's it's, it's sure. kind of up there in no man's It's got to be land. somewhere, yeah. So Either you're trying to get to Canada. Uh, yeah. You know, so or Alaska or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things. Yeah. But I, it is such a beautiful state. Washington it is. And, and Oregon, yep. all through there, man. It's, yep. it's some of the most beautiful part of the whole country. Yeah, What kind of stuff did you grow up doing? It was, we. I grew up on a farm. My dad worked in the livestock industry. Uh, he had big old ranch, raised Angus cattle uh, for a long time. And uh, so we, we grew so up So you're doing... vegetarian. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I was working my way around to. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, you know, kind of grew up. I would by no means call myself a cowboy, but we, uh, there's some degree of authenticity. I had a hat before I moved to Nashville, I guess, and, you know, grew up doing some of that stuff. Um I wanted. I thought I wanted to be a team roper when I was a kid. Before I realized I was no good at that, and had a little bit of a an affinity for for playing and singing. So I figured I'd stick with I what I was like good at. Always like dances after the rodeo more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's better to get on stage. I, exactly. I tend to not get quite as beat up. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And you get a check every time that way. Yeah, so <laughs> you get to go on to the next town. Yep. Exactly. No, I'm I'm happy uh, happy with the route I chose for sure. What's the country music scene like up there for a kid starting out? Man, a lot of a lot There's, of small honky tonks to play. No, there's dang near none. Um, you know, you got, yeah, nothing small. It, it's it's all, when country shows would come to town, it'd be for the county fair or, yeah. or for, you know, or if it was big enough to be in an arena or something. Uh, so you where'd go you go when something. you started playing? I mean, what, what was your entry level spot? Did you sing at church stuff? We, yeah, yeah, I did some church stuff. And, and I grew up in the bluegrass world. That was the, you know, the, the first thing for me, I thought George Strait looked cool in a cowboy hat. I could hear the bluegrass the in your voice, too. Yeah. The, the Whitley, I mean, the early yeah, exactly. stuff. And, and, the, the and the Skaggs. The Skaggs and, stuff, yep. definitely. Yep. So that was, it, it was always country for me. That's that's what made me fall in love and want to play guitar and sing. But uh, the first teacher I had, um, I took my first lesson when I was five. Um, and But she was in the bluegrass world, so she kind of got me and my whole family turned on to that. I got a little brother and two older sisters, um, and they kind of picked up some stuff at the same time, too. We ended up having a little four-piece uh, bluegrass band nice. <laughs> running around for about 10 years. We played, played our first show, I guess, when I was seven. We opened for a uh, a Patsy Klein musical at the local high school. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's a bunch of stuff like that. Bluegrass festivals. There's a decent, you know, little festival circuit up there doing that. And, uh, and then all the little open mics and Grange halls where dad could get us signed up, I guess was where we started. And then, uh, and then started branching out, you know, more just throughout the whole Northwest. Uh, but it was all pretty much all bluegrass festivals for me. Um, growing yeah. up, I wasn't paying, I didn't play my first actual country show with, you know, with a drum and a steel or something till I was 
shoot, 21, I guess. So it was all just— How old are you now? 26. So you, about five years? Yeah. So when you were doing the stuff with your brothers and sisters, yeah. the bluegrass thing, so I guess everybody, you were mixing it up. Everybody was singing songs, so you worked up yep. the whole things together. Yeah. When you— when you first started doing full length shows, I mean, by yourself, yeah. I mean, it's a big adjustment learning how to structure a show, keeping people on the dance oh, yeah. floor in a honky tonk, then oh, yeah. that type of thing. How big yep. of an adjustment was that? Having a drummer behind you and having yeah. four sets, five sets a night. Oh yeah, yeah. it's 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 big, man. Because yeah, you, you know the whole bluegrass thing. That's you're playing a forty five minute set, you know, in the afternoon. And you're getting to change up. You don't have right. to carry the whole load. Right, I mean, exactly. That, those things to interact with too. Exactly, exactly. So it's it's definitely. Um, you know, still a learning process. I, w- I wouldn't say I've got it figured out, um, but it was it was a big big deal. You know, obviously starting out, you're playing a bunch of covers. People don't know your song, so yep. you got to be playing a bunch of covers. So learning how to, you know, how much of that to do and and what stuff people uh, people are going to resonate with and and where to <laughs> slide those in the set to keep you know the high points coming that people keep getting excited and like you say come back out on the dance floor but and all the that fun stuff. thing that i hear from you is that uh learning those covers from guys that you really want to emulate i can tell that you got down and then there you were you were listening to where whitley was taking a breath and how he's oh, falling yeah, off man. a note and oh, where yeah. he was doing the little licks and you were really focusing on really making sure that you got every 100%. little piece of it right i can yes, hear sir. that that I, dedication I in your voice yeah. when i listen to some of your stuff yeah man that's for yeah. sure my parents had a they had a big old briefcase of uh tapes they still had a tape machine i think we were past the point of tapes at that point but they still had a tape machine down in the basement uh growing up and i'd sit down there for hours with my guitar just put them tapes in one after another sit there and learn them on the guitar learn how to sing them and all that and uh yeah it was a lot of a lot of whitley i think i i learned just about everything he ever cut yeah it's just such a sad thing man you know you look back and he only he had such a short career yeah, man i know and such a small body of work man yeah and we've all just beat it to freaking death. <laughs> exactly exactly you know God, and, and, i wish and, and, there was eight more records that we could be going through and i wish there was some stuff in the can that would magically reappear but mm-hmm. it's just not there no kidding but yeah. we had straight and we had yeah. haggard man and yeah. i i mean i straight was a big one for me did you get yeah. into a lot any of the early straight stuff Oh, all of it. That was that was my parents' favorite. So they they had him playing constantly while I was growing up. That was the first thing I asked to learn how to play on guitar was uh, Amarillo by Morning. I walked oh, yeah. in there as a five year old, and my teacher asked me what I want to learn to play. Amarillo by Morning. That was it for me. Then you know the rodeo songs. I love crying that. fiddle at the end. Man. Oh yeah, something magical. Oh about yeah. It. I think she told me that was a nice idea, and maybe let's start with Jesus Loves Me or something, and then we'll we'll work our way up to something with a key change and. Yeah minor chords so <laughs> we learned it eventually <laughs> when did you start really dreaming about doing it for a living when when did you realize that you had the talent and you could you might be able to do this i think probably about the the last couple years that we were doing the family band um so i guess we, we played our last show when i was 17 the last couple years of that it started to get to be really good where i felt it was on par with some of the you know and this was still bluegrass mind you but yep. it was on par with you know the people that we all looked up to uh that were bluegrass artists and whatnot it was like yeah we're right there we can play and sing with those guys that's you know we're not missing anything here um so i think it started to when i started to think about uh moving out well I, I didn't think about it my parents kind of kicked me out and told me i needed to move out i was it's i was failure to launch it's yeah like, exactly <laughs> well, i, don't I need know a if it was room. that as much i thought i was going to college <laughs> and i uh i guess it was yeah 17 that would have been 2015 um and uh and they they kind of shipped me off to colorado to go to school um and i went out there thought i was going to be a, a mechanical engineer uh for I went to school for a year for that. Um, they kind of, you know, they, they they are not musical at all. Obviously had no clue about the music business. So their advice was always to like, man, get you a good job. Uh, you know, make enough money you can afford to go do this on the weekends. And that's the thing. And uh, and so that was kind of what I thought, all right, whatever. I'll go get a mechanical engineering degree and, and do it on the weekends for fun, I guess. And then just kept getting busier and busier, um, on the bluegrass circuit kind of. Um, and it felt like, man, I feel like I could do this more than just as a hobby. And so I, in would have been summer of 2017, Mm -hmm. uh, I told them I was going to quit school, which they were obviously thrilled about. Um, (laughs) thought that was a very wise decision. (laughs) Um, and, (laughs) and, uh, I told them I was going to work construction and save money so that I can move out to Nashville. I didn't have, it, you know, it still felt like a big old pipe dream. I 
didn't have any clue how to get to Nashville or what the hell I was going to do when, when I got here. Um, but I just started, yeah, kept playing bluegrass shows a bunch, was working construction. Um, and I started just throwing videos on Facebook and, and online and stuff. And that was how Carson ended up finding out about me. It's funny you mentioned Daryl Singletary. It's, uh, he, he's obviously one of the best voices, you know, recently that we've had, uh, you know, he Absolutely. stacks up against all them old greats. Um, but when he died, was it end of late 2018, I believe, or early 2019? Yeah. yeah. It was before COVID. Yes. Um, but I had put up, I did a cover of Spilled Whiskey. Um, that kind of, that was the first thing that kind of blew up for me a little bit on Facebook. I'd get 1,500 views or something, and that thing come out of nowhere and ended up with like 300,000 views on it and uh, ended up on that Country Rebel page, um, and that's where that's where Carson found me off of. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it was... Uh, it was pretty funny. I, when that thing blew up, I started getting a bunch of calls, uh, from people out here in Nashville. Uh, you know, it was all kind of felt shady. It was all like, uh, you know, pay us this much or get to town. We'll cut you a record tomorrow. And yeah. Oh yeah. And, and everything, like I didn't know nothing, but it didn't feel right. And so I kind of got burnt out about that and, and taking calls and, and responding to emails about all that stuff. And, and so I just kind of, anyway, toward the end of that little run, uh, Carson ended up emailing me and he didn't say nothing. Of course, you know, Carson, he's, I think his email was like, Hey, my name's Carson Chamberlain. I'm, uh, I've been working in the music business a while. I'm not much for tooting my own horn, but, uh, you can probably look me up, uh, give me a call sometime. And so, and I just kind of archived the email (laughs) and didn't pay no attention to it. And, and, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, my wife now, she, she sent me, I was out on a gig like a few weeks later and she's like, Hey, you remember this Chamberlain fella? I don't know. Name rings a bell. And she's like, all right, well, I'm sending you a Wikipedia link. You're going to want to look at that. And we're going to want to email this guy back. So of course I pull up that link and it's all the, you know, stuff about him with Whitley and with mm-hmm. Jackson and producing the Mark Will stuff and Billy Currington, and Easton Corbin, and all that stuff. Um, and of course the long list of hit songs that he's been a writer on. And it was like, dang, this could be, you know, this is actually somebody legitimate. And, uh, so we started talking on the phone a little bit. Um, and I just loved his, his whole approach to it too. It wasn't, you know, everybody else, it was just, yeah, man, if you can come up with $20,000, get to town and, and we'll cut your record and, and get it out there. And he was, you know, it was much more the long game for him. It was like, man, it's, let's, let's figure out if we can be friends first and then, and then we'll, see if we can work well together and this you know and he told me from the start it's like this ain't going to be we're not cutting a record this year well this carson's is one be, of these uh, guys is, it's more about the music yeah and and it's all it's if, about for him and I, i've learned over the years and you trust your gut because yep. your gut won't steer you wrong and, yep. and when you get that feeling even if you don't quite know what's really going on around you when you get that feeling you got to back up mm-hmm. but what i've learned in this business if it's something that's deep in you and it's a passion thing surround yourself with the right people and good things will happen yep that that's what it's all about and carson's yeah. one of those good people because yeah you know here, here's another thing that i that i found in my own career if you wind up with the wrong people and you get forced to cut a bunch of stuff that you don't really care about that's yeah. not in you yep if you don't really get it down to the point that you're passionate about it when you go in the studio you're probably going to have a hit with it, and then you're going to be stuck with it for the rest yeah, of your Yeah, exactly. Life. you got to play that for the next 30 you years play it and hate that song. And, and, yeah. and I'm glad that I didn't fall into that. Yeah. And I see I have a lot of peers, and I won't name any names, that, that I know have been stuck in that situation yeah. yep. and wind up having to go out there and play stuff that they yeah. absolutely hate. Yeah. yeah so I remember Diffie talking about the only time I ever saw him live was up at Cheyenne Frontier Days while I was living in Colorado. Yeah. And he talked about that. He was like, uh, with that Devil Dancing Empty Pocket song, he's like, "Man, I tell you what, when they ha- when they played me this song, I hated it. I didn't want to cut it. They made me cut it, and I think I still hated it. But with the mailbox money I've been getting <laughs> for the last <laughs> you know fifteen years on it, it, I don't hate it so much anymore." <laughs> I love Joe, funny. man. I sure oh, do yeah. miss him, man. Golly, it's like we've lost it. a lot of our heroes, man. We just yeah. recently lost my friend Toby Keith. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's been a been a list going back to Troy Gentry a few years yeah. ago. I yeah, mean, man. Uh, and our icons, most of our icons are gone, yep. man. It's uh, yep. so having having some traditional country music in a new generation <laughs> is pretty freaking awesome, man. Yeah, man. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to yeah, glad to try and help keep it all alive. It's, That's a good thing. It means so to me. I know when I closed my eyes when I was a teenager because yeah. when I can I didn't know anybody either, and I yeah. didn't know how this business worked i mean i watched cmt and i knew who the writers and producers were right 
when you when I closed my eyes, I had a vision of what what it looked like to me, and really what my passion was from years of listening to Haggard songs. And yep. When you close your eyes, when you really when you really got bit by the dream, and you started seeing yourself, what was what was your dream? What was your passion? You know, and it's. I mean, yeah. that's, I don't think it's about the money or any of that. No, no, right. No, at, uh, that's an interesting question. I, I think it definitely looked a lot different than uh, than it actually does so far anyway. And, you know, it, How so? I think all the, I mean, even just from when I first got to town, and once again, here's another, Carson, you know, saved my life. I don't know where I'd be without him. Uh, but when I got to town, I assumed I'd move here, start playing gigs in town, and I'd, you know, quit working or at least working a day job and I was going to start playing every night and that's how I'd make my money and we'd be writing songs and <laughs> yeah. doing all this. And he said, no, you definitely ain't doing that. Don't go play down on Broadway. Don't go get sucked down into that and get stuck there. And so it was for the first two years basically that I lived here, I was still working construction and, and yeah. I'd have two days off a week that, uh, that I'd write with him and then I was working construction. It's like, man, what the hell am I doing? I move all the way out here to Nashville and I still wearing a tool belt around and swinging a hammer. This yeah, is Yeah, but dumb. you get trapped down down in some of those places and you just get lost in the shuffle, man. Yeah, man. It's just exactly. Too, and there's and another thing that I discovered when I ca I came here is that for the first time, I mean, cuz I'd I'd worked around areas and been a musician and struggling and you know to live from week to week and yeah. pay a whatever crappy trailer house I was living right. in. Uh, and then I came here and for the first time I found all these other people that were just like me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'd never experienced that before. Yeah. And, and I felt like that I was finally home for the first time when I got here yeah. because I, I mean, musicians and songwriters and singers yeah. and everybody was passionate. Yeah. Yeah. What it's, did you, what was it like when you first experienced that? It, it was awesome. It is, it's, it's funny cause you're, you kind of realize simultaneously it's like, Oh damn! Now I'm here in the middle of the competition too, and and, and all the rest. Of, yeah, exactly. Dang good competition. And but like you said, it's also like, wow. Here's finally some people that understand exactly. You know that same fire that's inside of you. Yeah. Um. That you know, with all my best friends growing up and stuff, they they went on. They got engineering degrees, and they and they got you know real jobs, and and they're starting families and doing all this kind of thing, and uh, and it. You know, if you feel a bit like a foreigner or like an alien a little bit uh, until you get here. And it's like, oh, yeah, there are a bunch of other people that, that feel that same thing as I do. And kind of, you know, the the have to or whatever that, you know, sell your soul to devil. H however you want to say it, it's, you know, it, it gets down in us and and I can't do nothing else. This is, you know, once I got a taste of it, it was like, man, I can't go back to it gets doing it as a soul, hobby. And, man. Yeah, it really does. And it's deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time, big time. So have you had a chance to go out and do uh, radio tours? I mean, what label are you on? Uh, it's a little label called uh, Leo 33, okay. uh, brand new thing. They, I was first thing they signed. Um, and Katie Dean, who was head of promotion over at, uh, over at Universal for, shoot, 20 years, I guess. Yeah. She's the one that's running it. Cool. Um, so, I'm sure yeah, they have been, universal distribution then if she kind of came there. Well, so they're with uh, Firebird Music, a big right. holding company, and, and they, I don't know exactly what all the, you know, I guess there's other people looking at the paperwork, and, and I'm trying to be out here singing songs. <laughs> there's, um, a whole, there's a whole process. Yeah, exactly, all, exactly. It'll, it'll, it'll all come together. Yeah, but they've, they've been really great. We, uh, we've done a bunch of radio promo stuff, uh, kind of built around uh, my touring schedule because we were – all last fall, uh, we were out on a bunch of opening shows, some with Dwight Yoakam and yeah. and then some with a, a band called the Steel Woods. We spent a bunch of time with them, and then Ashley McBride a good bit too. Um, and so we were we were pretty slam packed uh, all the way up to Christmas last year. And uh, so they kind of built in where we could do radio stops just around what we were already touring, and that's kind of what we're doing so far this year too. Um, I'm about to I think next year next week I'll be in California all week. Uh, it's a grueling pace, so, man. It is. I was. Uh, I said it's kind of like airports. A, it's kind of like a running for office. You just never get to have an election. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's got as soon as you get done with one single, you got to start all over because you. Yeah, exactly. Time. And it will be that way for the next ten years of yeah. your life, at least, if yeah. not longer. <laughs> it slows down a little bit though. Like after the first, I'm asking, not saying, not after. Like I felt They'll like tell you that it's like we but make we make the, the first big introduction with uh -uh. the first single and then it slacks off a little bit. No, no. Nope. Then you're gonna start all over again. 
because there's a lot of them out there, and you had to keep seeing them. Yeah, they, I yeah. mean, and yeah. then you're going to be asked to do a guitar pool, oh, yeah. charity events. Oh yeah, that d- never ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does not end. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it's interesting. Yeah, that stuff that was different to where you know, like we got shoot twenty five radio shows coming up or something, which you love to do. You want to scratch their back, you know, they're scratching yours, but it's like, dang. Got 25 shows on the books that uh, I ain't getting a check for. I hope these other things we're getting paid for cover those. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the politics of the business is very real. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. You know, the thing is, everybody else is doing it. Yeah, exactly. And so you got to hustle right with them if you want to keep up. Absolutely. It's a big yeah. part of it. And, and you know, even even after you have a couple of big hit records on the radio, sometimes you still have to bend like a tree. And, you yeah. know, it's just like any other business. Sometimes you got to give a little, get a little. Yep. I mean, it's, that's yep. just the way, that's the way life is in general. 100%. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. As all that, it's been wild to see even, you know, everything's just been new for me. From the first time we went in the studio, that was with with Carson, that was wild to me. I, I didn't know how the Nashville recording process worked. The you know you Where'd bring you record your, at uh, soundstage. Okay, um, who all was on your session? We had Brent Mason on guitar. That was a must for me. Uh, Scotty Sanders on steel and dobro. Um, Tommy Harden on drums. Glenn Wharf on bass on some of it. Jimmy Carter on bass on some of it. Uh, a fellow named Andy Leftwich played uh, fiddle and some mandolin. He was, okay. he was Ricky Skaggs' player for a long time. I'd known him for a little bit just yeah. from the grass world. but um, And then Gary Prim on uh, on piano. I think that a lot was all of them. really good players on yeah. there, man. Yeah. And then so I, when you walk in the studio for the first time, I, I guess, did you do any bluegrass recordings? Did you go in any small yeah, studios but, and stuff? But it, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, it is. You know, it, where you... You've got your band and your band plays on the record. You don't have session musicians. You and you, you, know, you work up the songs. You go in there exactly, you work up the time. songs, and and so you go in there and you do four or five takes, and it's like I think we got a pretty good one. And if we need to overdub any harmonies, we can do that, and then it's you know it's kind of good. We we went in and shoot the last bluegrass record I cut. We went in and did ten songs in one day, and uh, and walked out of there with the record. <laughs> Obviously, they mixed it a little bit or whatnot, but there well, wasn't even still... any overdubs, and uh, so it was wild to you know. But watching those guys when you walk in and knowing that they've the only person that's heard any of those songs is usually Just the your, session, your leader. session leader, and he's got things charted out. Exactly. So are you playing a work tape or a rough demo? Yeah, exactly. Past not charts. Everybody's looking through it. They go out there and collaborate a little bit. Usually one to two takes. Yeah, man. Maybe three. Maybe three. Maybe a band yep. punch or whatever. But it's yep. not much. No. And then you start your overdubs. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a pretty fascinating how quick they are Crazy. and how I mean how quick they can turn on a dime if you want a different type of approach for us. So exactly. I mean, and the clarity and the separation of the instruments. I mean, it's it's a whole other game. It's man. insane. It yeah, really is. yeah. It, that blew my mind doing that for the first time, and, and it still does every time we go in there. It's you know, I love Brent it. Mason never ceases to blow my mind. Oh, so, <laughs> Brent, I love working with Brent. Man, there's yeah. nobody else like him. And yeah, you can awesome. change gears on him, man. And mm-hmm. he is so quick. He he's he has so much pre-settings built into his rig. He can, yeah. he can pick up another guitar yeah. and make one change. And yep. usually if you have anything you want different, he can give it to you quick. Yeah. Give well, him that... any influence from any genre yep. and he can take you right yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. And and that amazed me too. Like they got no ego with their with no. their playing. Like it was intimidating to me. Carson told me going into it, because I'm I try to be a player myself, he's like, man, if, if you're hearing something different, uh, speak up and, you know, you we want your input on this because the more input you have, the more you it's going to be and the more unique it'll be. And But then I'm sitting there listening to Brent play these scalding licks and it's like, really, I'm supposed to tell him to play something different that, that I'm hearing <laughs> something different? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. But when it, you know, whenever it came around to being that way, it's, you know, he's got no ego with his playing. It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Not if that's all. what you're hearing. Yeah, we'll do that. And it's Well, you know, the guys that do it all the time, man, uh, I, I've, I've made a lot of records in Nashville over the years, and you'll find mm. out real quick, somebody, even a great player, if they show up with a bad attitude, they won't be playing on sessions very long. Yeah, yeah, that's they for sure. They get weeded out real quick. And, yep. uh, and, you know, it's that's just the way it is because there's uh, – being humble and being able to realize that as a player coming into the studio, you're making a record for somebody else. Right. And leave your ego at the door yep. because it needs to be tailored around what this artist is and yeah. what their vision is because they're yep. the ones that have to go out and perform it. Yep. And, Absolutely. And the, every guy you mentioned gets that. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. percent they Yeah. Just, it, they're all freaking great and and we'll take my stupid input and <laughs> make it into and, something useful <laughs> and, and make and, and take it and expand on it 10 exactly exactly 
So as you've started traveling around, uh, have a chance to get out and see some of the cities. What's one of the more interesting places that you've been to as you've traveled that you that you wanted to see that's been on? Yeah. Your list? Um, I guess I've been surprised by some places. Like I've I've never been a very big city guy. I'm not a fan of them, uh, and they kind of stress me out when I go into them, especially when we're rolling. You know, it's I'm gonna say sprinter van and trailer. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you're in a damn bus. So, uh, that that kind of stuff. You know, when I'm still driving my own sprinter van and trailer down these stupid cobbled streets in Philadelphia, uh, it's like, what in the hell am I doing here? We don't yeah. belong. But I've I really a lot enjoyed of fans and, and yeah, yes, there are. Yep, yeah. it it always uh, yeah amazes me when you know you finally get in that room that night and shoot it's full and and there's a bunch of people in jeans and, and boots singing just the like worst me song. exactly yeah. exactly um i'm trying to think of one that sticks out a bunch um we just played uh last weekend i guess in minneapolis uh that'd been my first time up there and i don't it was probably just because because of the crowd, I think that's one of the best crowds we've played for. It was really? it was sold out in uh, yeah the Fillmore in Minneapolis. We, we and we were opening for Flatland Cavalry. That wasn't our show, um, but they I know Minneapolis uh, was really early on the record up there, so they've been playing it a good bit, and it just felt like everybody in that room knew uh, knew the single. And that's awesome. Yeah, and so just knowing that, uh, you know, just how enthusiastic they were about our stuff um, was that one. Definitely stuck with me a little bit. Those cowboy hat wearers have uh, have grown have kind of uh, taken a little bit more hold up in the Northeast. That's always yeah. been more of a difficult part of the country for, for sure. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's gotten a lot better over the years. Yeah, yeah. man, that was we did just a whole run through there. We we even the week before that we played Detroit and Cleveland and uh, and Chicago. There's a lot and, of country fans in Detroit. Yes, I mean, yeah, big country we, fans. We we really enjoyed it up there. They were really good to us. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. You know, obviously you think country music come it comes from the country but everybody can relate to it a little bit and and there's lots of folks wearing jeans and boots or not wearing jeans and boots that that hear that sound and it takes them to a certain place or they've and, and moved they wanna, there from somewhere else yeah. a job or, or a yeah. relationship or something brought them there yep. but they came from someplace on yeah. a farm or somewhere yep. where they they got out just because make a living or whatever yeah, the exactly was. and it's they still know, love that down home sound something about whatever you want to call uh, it put the cowboy boot on going yep. to a honky tonk yeah exactly <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. absolutely it's uh, it's pretty fascinating when you start touring around the country. Hopefully, yeah. you get 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 in a bus soon. Yes, That's, I'm hoping so. <laughs> that changes everything. Yeah, make it make it a little easier, uh, yeah. for sure on some of them. Yeah, it's it does, funny because, it you know. It, it hits your bottom line a little harder. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Try to find the balance of when to make that move when uh, it makes sense. I was sense. just going to jump in here because you're, you're touring with Lainey. Yes, sir. A little bit. She was talking, I believe, when we talked to her about how much a bus changed her life as far as the sleep and yeah. her quality of life. It was yeah. hard for a long time for her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we've worked with her. Me and Justin were out. Uh, right before COVID shut down, I was out with Justin Moore and Laney was opening for us. Oh, and no she kidding. was by herself with an acoustic guitar in a wow. sprinter van. Yeah. Yep. I don't even know if she was in a sprinter van. I think she was in a regular van. Might have still been a 15 passenger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah. she was she was just playing by herself, yeah. so it was pretty different. And I, 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 I've i watched her come up through the ranks, which, yeah. and it's been pretty amazing to watch. I text her. She just won her first Grammy the other night. Which yeah, man, awesome. I've seen that. Yeah. She's, she's the real deal, too. Yeah, man. She I, really is. She's I, class. Shoot, I ain't hardly even, I haven't spent any time with her. I got to know her, her boyfriend, Duck, a little bit. Yeah. Um, we've hung out some, and, and he's he's been really good to me, and and I haven't hung out with her yet, but she's texted me a little bit and been really kind so far. Very excited to, to spend some time on the road with them. She's one of those people that, uh, of, of the new generation that I kind of gravitate to because she, she's a lifer and she's yeah. passionate and she's put her time in too. Yeah. And I mean, she's 100%. been in Nashville for over 10 years, grinding yeah. it out and starving to death yep. and trying to figure out what the next move was. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's put her time in. Yeah. And it's yeah. cool to see how that, you know, it just, feels like it stays this way for so long and then all of a sudden something finally catches and she's just on a friggin' rocket ship now. So I don't know if you met my guys. We call him Junior. Yep. His name is Derek. Yeah. But he uh, he plays second guitar in the band. He's doing okay. the audio. And that's yeah. Scott. He plays piano in the band, so Love he's it. doing all the video stuff. Hell yeah. What you got, boys? So uh, is there a stage uh, in the United States or anywhere, but particularly the United States, if you can think of one, that, uh, that you haven't played that you'd love to? I got a good idea of what it might be, but. Like what? What stage would you like to play that you haven't yet? Shoot, I. It's yeah. There's definitely. Uh, 
a bunch coming up. We it's funny. I got to play the Opry pretty early on when I got here to town, and that was you know a, way up there at the top of the bucket list, obviously. And I yeah. didn't expect to cross that one off quite so early, uh, but been on there a good bit. Hit the Ryman just for the first time in January as well, so that was That's awesome. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. We just did Billy Bob's in December too. My well, number two. That's, yeah, yep, go, yeah. That was uh that was a big one. Um we're gonna be on the Watershed Festival, uh, and that's out in Quincy, Washington, close by where I grew up. So that'll be kind of like that's just a, you know, breathtaking venue and uh and kind of a cool one just to be sort of, you know, hometown type yeah. of stage. Um I'm trying to think that's any a other list, man. Yeah. yeah, those are yeah. There's a lot more, but though you know, those are I don't know. Obviously, Opry and Ryman and stuff yes. is is way up there for for country yeah. country yeah. stuff. So that's yeah. What you got, Scott? Oh, I was just you say you got three siblings. Is that yes, right? sir. Yeah, younger brother and two older sisters. Okay, and what yep. what do they think of what you're doing? Are they, are um, they supportive <laughs> or jealous or all no, of the above? They, no, yeah, they're they're very supportive. Um, my. Uh, the I got a sister that's eighteen months older than me. She actually lives here in town. She's a vet. Um, she's a better singer than I am, and uh, sure could have been an artist in her own right if she wanted to. But but she uh, I don't think she liked the the limelight quite as much. But definitely talented enough. Uh, her name's Maddie. She's yeah. She's here in town uh, with her husband. And she then, thinks you're crazy. Yeah, uh, a little bit. I don't know. I don't I don't think she thinks I'm crazy quite. But I I had her. I did have her up to to do the Opry with me one time. She come up and she plays fiddle and, and sings great. So uh, she came up and and did the the Opry with me one night, which was really cool. And then little brothers, he works for the for the sale barn for my dad back home. Um, he's been doing that for a few years now. Um. His name's Jorm. Uh, he's, I think he's a bigger fan of, of what I'm doing than anybody else, pretty much. If I call him on the phone, he's just like, he's got, he's, uh, he's a big like stats guy where it comes to sports or apparently now music too. He, he'll like have, all the latest numbers on whatever it is, if it's Spotify monthly listeners or our chart position or whatever it is, or Instagram followers, he's got them all list. He's like, so I seen you, I seen you're up 7.2 thousand uh, followers on Instagram <laughs> since last week when we talked. And, and I seen your Spotify monthly listeners are up a little bit too. And, and you know, he's got it down to the 546.7 thousand. <laughs> it's like pull it up on my phone. Yeah, no shit. Sure is. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's ate up with it. Um, which is cool. And then my oldest sister, Lakin, she lives back in Colorado. Um, I lived with her out there for a couple of years. Um, she's got a husband, um, and, uh, and two little girls, um, that, uh, the first grandbabies of the family, I guess. Um, but they're, uh, they're very supportive too. They're the smart ones. I don't know what happened to me. She went to MIT. She's got a dang PhD and teaches, uh, teaches math at the college there in, in, uh, in Colorado. So they, uh, I don't know. It sounds like a great I missed family. out on that part of it. Yeah, and great <laughs> she at the a college where uh, uh, Deion Sanders is coaching. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's where I went for a year. It was really? University of Colorado. Yeah. Well, that's it. He really came in guns a blazing, didn't he? Yo, the did wheels he ever? Kind of fell off. Of, <laughs> he did. About game four or five, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Was I was rooting it. for him though. Yeah. I mean, he he definitely brought some spirit, and I bet his recruit recruitment is going to be recruitment oh, is yeah. going to be great this year. A hundred percent. Because he he can go in and talk to talk. Can't that's he? for dang sure. I bet yeah. it brought a whole lot of energy to the campus. Yeah, Let's absolutely. Ball games. Everybody was, was. Man, I never did. I never went. Uh, they were not much fun to root for uh, while I was out there. <laughs> and you had, had a still to go like, back last year while he was. No, there, right? I didn't. I didn't yeah. get a chance to go back. It's funny, Those my games sister are on Saturdays and we're working. Exactly, we're working. So if we get a Denver date, maybe I'll get to go out to a game or something. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, it's funny. She's got some vendetta against him. She don't like him. She thinks it's. She's like, well, he, when he ain't a real coach. Around. He just recruits people and then when his son's rolling around in a in a bentley or or a, well, a high-end car <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah, exactly. difficult oh absolutely i mean i'm sure that causes a little friction absolutely i was gonna ask you if you don't mind come on give me uh, one when you when you come to town was it i know you said you're you know you were trying to be a songwriter was that a big thing for you early on or, or did you figure you'd be more of the just singer, like, because I'd been such a George Strait nerd, I knew that his name wasn't on any of those songs or any of those hits anyway that he'd had, and so I figured that was going to kind of be my path to come here and, you know, dig through some catalogs and find some great songs and, and go in and sing them, and Carson was the one that kind of, he posed it as a question to me when I got here, he's like, did, 
have you thought about, you know, being a writer? Would you like to do that? Or have you written a bunch? And I said, I'd like to try it out, but I really don't know. And ended up falling in love with it. And, and it's yeah. been, you know, it's cool to be able to craft a song and say it just exactly how you'd say it and turn the melody just exactly how you'd hear it. Even though, you know, there's a bunch of great, great songs that you could have hits on. It's fun to have it your is. fingerprint on it a little more. You know, for me, I, um, I, 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 I didn't know how this was going to, shake out i mean yeah. i came here with nothing but a dream i was yeah. dirt poor i mean i moved here in a beat up old car seven hundred dollars in my pocket and i didn't know anybody when i got here either yeah. so it, you know you you come in and and i started writing with everybody i could meet hanging yeah. out where the musicians and the songwriters were and just kind of let everything just kind of find its place yeah. i didn't i didn't go down to no, knock on a bunch of doors yeah. i wasn't chasing a label it kind of found me sure um uh, but i'd been writing a lot and that was one of the key factors that helped me get a record deal because yeah. I had been writing a lot of yep. songs and I, I was kind of networking with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but let me say this, man, as you, as you go through the process, I learned early on one, even when I really started learning more about the craft and writing with like, you know, Paul Nelson and Larry Boone and, and a lot of the A-level guys that really knew how to write songs that didn't really need me. Yep. As, as I wrote with other people, I always tried to make the things that I wrote stack up to the other things I always looked outside for songs too yeah because it it's the, there's so it, the song is the most important thing to all of it without yep. a great song yep. and and there are guys that do it religiously every day like clockwork i mean they're they're coming in every morning five yep. six days a week and writing sometimes two a day yep sometimes more uh and and guys that write on that level i consider them true american poets and a guy that Absolutely. writes part-time like i do yeah. uh even i might i might hit one out of the park every now and then but i'm gonna write a bunch of duds along the way yeah too. yeah absolutely and i and I, I always felt like i owed it to that my fan base to really try to make sure that i had the best songs whether they were right. mine or anybody else right that I could don't just cut them because your name's on them absolutely it's, yeah yeah i think that's that's a very important thing man yeah uh you know and you know I, if i hadn't uh, if i hadn't had that philosophy i wouldn't have found time marches on or pay me right. birmingham yeah you know because i didn't have a thing to do with either one of them absolutely and they were massive yeah yeah a hundred percent that's cool. So, what do you what do you envisualize for the next few years of your career? What do you see there? Give me a five year plan of where mm -hmm. you think you're going to be at. Mm hmm. Um. Obviously, hopefully, we can keep running running uh, a few singles up the charts. Uh. You know, feel good about. It's funny that the radio world's all brand new to me too. I don't have no frame of reference for what success looks like as far as that. But according to the the label and management and everything in Carson, it's like, man, this is couldn't be starting off better so very excited about that i love the um being able to i feel like radio you know it's a funny it's a i don't know gets a little bit of uh i don't know put put on the back burner i guess in a lot of ways um in music these days and i think it's really important um just for to me that the whole business comes down to to selling tickets i guess whether you, they're finding your stuff on spotify or on the radio that's all a commercial to get people to come buy a ticket to the show um and i think radio does a great job of selling tickets still so very excited oh, yeah. about that stuff and uh i think five year plan will be out with laney this year um i think that's about as as good as i could have if i could have drawn it up I, i'd probably have picked her uh to go out with so i'm really glad she uh, she chose me and, and wants us to go out with her that'll be awesome and uh i wanna i i kind of told a booking agent we've got you know a few dates this spring with flatland cavalry still and and some with brothers osborne um and then we'll go out on a few things with dirks bentley and one with luke bryan and then just the laney stuff and i kind of told him let's be done with opening stuff outside of that and and let's uh, start headline, you know, even if we got to, we're going to take less money on some of that stuff, but let's start hitting every little, you know, 500 cap club in the country. And there's a lot and of them. Yeah, there is. You don't need you to wear out your welcome sure anywhere. Been beating up Texas. Yeah, quite a bit man. Too. Yeah. We were down there a bunch yeah. last year. We'll be down there a bunch again this year. Um, and, uh, yeah. And just, I don't know, keep it on crafting the, the, you know, the headline show sort of a thing and, and making it an experience for, for the fans to come out to and just, you know, be in a whole different world for, for one night, I guess. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of, that's, I want to be a headliner, um, and, and go out and just sell as many tickets as I can. So it's, you know, we'll go play a bunch of 500 cap clubs this year, hopefully 
by next year maybe we'll have a you know a top 10 single or something and and another yeah. one starting on the way and maybe we can be playing 1200 or 1500 rooms uh, I don't know just keep on taking the baby steps and and climbing the rungs of the ladder I guess yeah. as much as I can how uh, uh how much uh, what what is uh, what are they doing social media wise with you I mean cuz that's I mean I didn't come up in that era it's right. it's, it's foreign to me I'm, there's a lot of stuff I'm not comfortable yeah. doing I mean what what all kind of stuff are you doing you doing stuff every day you posting every day so I've got a company now that uh that posts for me um and they put the stuff together we'll do you know every month or couple months we'll get together for you know, several hours and, and shoot a bunch of different stuff. Um, and then they'll cut it all up and put it in clips and, and write the captions. And the, basically all I got to do is go in and make sure the caption is something I'd say and yeah. click the approve button and they get them scheduled to go up. And then I still, you know, interact as far as comment section and messages and stuff with fans. Um, but they, yeah, they, <laughs> That was a, a learning curve because I think they had me kind of wanting me to kind of do a bunch of different trendy stuff or a bunch of stuff that other people do on socials. And I was just like, man, that is not me. I feel, you know, it feels like a departure from my identity to do kind of that stuff. So all I've done is just sit there and played songs with my guitar and posted that on there. And so That's far, it's, whether it be covers or, or my own stuff, it's, yeah, I, it's so far resonated with people. And so I've been thankful that I haven't had to, you know, whore myself out a little bit on socials. It, you know, it's a lot too. And, and once you start feeding that machine and, and yeah. posting multiple times a day, it's, it's like people expecting this. Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. No, it's, it's just too much. No, and it's, it's, it takes away your quality of life. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's a heavy demand on you when you're trying to break as a new artist in any way. I mean, there's so many yep. people pulling at you and with, with every step of success, it gets worse. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just, there's just a yeah. lot of demands on your time. Um, yeah. yeah it's just part of it yeah and it feels i feel like it's there's i can start to feel a little desperate at times like I, for the most part i don't think i do but i feel like starting to feel this pretty steady steep climb right now and and it feels like everything's working and it's kind of like i feel desperate to like yeah who needs me who wants me it, like I'm, you have to do everything keep, exactly keep yeah pouring fuel on the fire don't lose this chance because you know if you mess up the first impression you uh the second one's a lot harder to come by Amen. and so it's kind of i'm just like i'll sell my soul to whatever to well to don't make go that happen. far just no i know <laughs> i know but but you know it can it can get to feeling like you know shit i've dreamed about doing this since i was five years old i ain't gonna let it slip away sort of a thing but no but there's also a balance too about not giving yourself away too cheaply and, yeah and too often yeah uh there's there's got to be a specialness to it too uh and and you know it's kind of like that old analogy or the old saying when you get on a plane if the plane uh, starts to have problems and the mass drop down put yours on first because if you ain't if you yeah. ain't awake you can't help nobody yeah. else yeah yeah so there's got to be a balance between your mental health and your yeah. physical health and and the demands on your time and being able to give time back to your wife and your family yep. Yep. Uh, because if you if you don't hold on to those things, man, you'll lose yourself in the shit. Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. really do. Yeah. So I hopefully doubt. you can keep a balance from that. And yeah. I know that's hard to do. Certainly. How how, uh, how often have you been able to get back home to see your family? Uh, shoot, we go, we have a pretty standing uh, week at the end of the summer. Uh, yeah. we, my folks got a place up in Idaho on the lake there. And, and so we, the whole family gets back together for a whole week and, uh, and we'll just hang out on the boat and drink beer and play volleyball and, you know, just fool around for a whole week. That's always good. And then we always, we go back for, uh, either Christmas or Thanksgiving. We alternate years and, uh, and we'll go back usually for a week for that too. So there's, yeah. there's two kind of standing, uh, big trips every year and then there always ends up being they do mama man yeah exactly and they they do a good job of coming out here too you know like they'll for the Nashville shows we got with Laney they're going to come out for that and um so we you know we sneak in a few different weekends here and there too and I always make sure and build it in if we're going to be touring back there I'll make sure and have a couple days on either side of it to be able to go back and hang out see old friends and 
like you said, see mama. Yep. You said a while ago, and I wanted to touch on this, your, yeah. that your brother worked at the cell barn. Yeah. Some of my favorite memories. I used to love to go to the cell barn with my dad when I was a kid. <laughs> and I don't know what it was about a cell yeah. barn cheeseburger, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, an old greasy cell barn cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. Old greasy griddle, man. There's just something special about it. Yeah. It? <laughs> it's, I think it's a, it stays a special it's place. It's the smell. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and it stays a, stays a special place as long as you don't have to work there too much. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, so it, yeah, because it gets on your boots and it don't come off. Yeah. Yeah, that's for dang sure. <laughs> What's your yeah. favorite cut of beef? Oh, I'd probably pick a, a ribeye or something. That's me, man. Yeah. And I've had a hard time. I, I've been to some really high-end steakhouses. Mm-hmm. I just, I would take just a regular old ribeye over yeah. Wagyu. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I don't. Exactly. Not, some of it, it's, it's, it's like, a little maybe bit, this is above my too, taste. Yeah, I might, I just, I might quite, just be too dumb to enjoy this enough. But I, I like the texture of a good traditional, yes. well-aged ribeye. Oh, yeah. That's just hard to beat, man. Yeah, man. And maybe good. it's the, the redneck country in me. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like something you kind of are familiar with that, that makes it, I don't know. It's it's kind of special. I love it. Yeah, it is, man. And that country way of life has certain things. I when I was growing up, mama, mama burnt everything. Not I'm not like burnt burnt, but <laughs> no, daddy yeah. wanted everything well done. And yep. I didn't realize that you could eat a rare steak until I got a lot older, <laughs> yeah. or that the flavor was so good. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, because daddy made mama burn everything. That's it was pounded funny. to death and cooked to a freaking crisp, man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> my my daddy wasn't making my mama do nothing. She she was a good cook, and uh, and if he didn't like it he better learn to like it and the same goes for the rest of us kids too because she knew how to make it right and she was making it good and if you don't like that then you're wrong if mama ain't happy nobody's happy exactly I love that, yeah. man. I, I'm, you know, what was uh, what was teenage life like, man? Growing up, we yeah. had a lot of gravel roads, man. And when you yep. get here, you, you got to go a long way to find a gravel road here. Yeah, everything's paved sure. here. I yep. mean, riding around drinking cold beer on yep. back roads is just not something you can do here. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, man, it's funny. So we moved. Uh, my early life was spent down on that farm, but we moved to the suburbs when I was ten or twelve or something. Um, and so we ended up at that became a lot less frequent that we get to go do a branding or something or, or yeah. do a gather out on the ranch, but it wasn't every day anymore. Um, we kind of, you know, we had friends in the neighborhood there. We'd rip around on dirt bikes or something, or we, we still had wilderness around us. Um, and we go wander around with, with our guns and shoot birds or rabbits or something and, and build forts out in the, in the wilderness a little bit, but it wasn't quite, quite as much, you know, it was, it was already pretty developed up there. It's crazy to see it now, but where my folks live, they, they, uh, live on this kind of hill looking down on, uh, toward the river, the Columbia river out there. And, uh, when we moved there first, there was five houses, I think in the neighborhood all spread out and on big lots and stuff and going back there now and they're building a dang Costco, like, Point three miles wow. from my folks' place, and used to look down, and there'd be a bunch of orchards and and uh, potato fields and hay fields and stuff uh, all the way down to the river. Um, and now it's just a sea of rooftops. It's it's wild to go back. There's uh, it's turned into quite something. My out behind my folks' place, there used to be there's this big old uh, there's some drainage ponds out there from the farmland around, and we'd wander out there. They had a bunch of trees through there, and that was the best you know, bird hunting we could do through there. We'd yeah. spend. Y'all got grouse or pheasant yeah. or anything up yeah, there? Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of upland birds. Uh, quail, lots of quail, doves, and but yeah, lots of pheasant. Chucker, too. I love that. I've never hunted that. I love pheasant. Done a lot of quail hunting, dove okay. hunting over yeah. the years. But that I've was never really my... hunted grouse either. I've never, been, where yeah. I grew up, we really didn't have that. Right. Yeah, yeah my, my grandpa's favorite thing to do is chucker hunt. Did you ever go snipe hunting when you were a kid? Snipe hunting? No, no, I did not. You didn't get sucked into that? No, no. <laughs> did you ever go snipe hunting, Junior? Yes, sir, I did. Did you? Sure did they did. give you a, a paper sack and make you whop on it with a stick and go, cheep, 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 Man, I was sitting cheep, there cheep, in that field like, where the hell is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing at your ass. Oh, yeah, I was probably like nine or something. You know. Scott, did you ever snipe hunt? No. I, 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 <laughs> is I've this a the, joke that I ain't getting? Oh, snipe hunting back on the big it, thing. It's it's I've been the butt of this joke too. Yeah, okay. I don't remember exactly what it is, but there's no such thing as a snipe, I guess. Is that the okay. joke? No, 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 no. There, there is a snipe, but a you snipe. don't you don't go out there and cheap, 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 yeah. call them up and whoop on the side of a paper sack and they just run okay. in the sack. <laughs> yeah, while they were, all the older kids are up there laughing at your okay. ass. A snipe okay. is actually like on the coast. 
Sister. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like an ocean bird. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. They're not in the field anywhere. Snipe. No. Snipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I remember going out with a whole group of us when I was you know, like nine or ten years old before you know any better, and all yeah. the teenagers and everything. Oh, yeah. We'd go on a hayride or something. We'd all go snipe hunting. They'd work you up for a good week or two. You'd have your paper sack, and they'd bring the stick and everything. Okay, we're going to go up here, and they'd send all the kids down there, and y'all go cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> y'all do that and whop on that side of that paper sack every now and then. Whop. And, and, and they're up there laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then every now and then they go. I got one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you ever go cow tipping? Stuff. No, never yeah, did no dude, cow tipping man, either. No cow tipping. We nothing. we did. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, we come up with better games. We take you know drinking jenga, black cat firecrackers. You know them. We oh go, yeah. We would. Uh, we trick my little brother into. Um, we get him to go stick one in a cow pie and light it and see if he could get back fast enough without that shit splattering on him. <laughs> so we did we did stuff like that. That was a good one. Um, see, when you grow up in the country, you got to be creative. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have no dang Xbox. With The TV was a sin unless it was a Mariners game and uh, – or Lori Dew on Fox News uh, as the I first woman Lori, I she ever. Sounds very attractive. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's the first love of my you're life. Bringing her name up, oh Lori. The first Dew. love of my life. <laughs> I think since I was six years old or something. Um, I'm gonna have to look Lori Dew up. Yeah, you best do it. You best do it. Um, <laughs> her awesome. and Edgar Martinez. That's that's who I was. All I was allowed to watch on TV. But uh, yeah, you got to be creative and. Uh, <laughs> Find some other things to occupy your mind. Oh, and you know, uh, I, let me warn you, there are some pranksters out there, and I've been known to do some pretty devious stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. We were finishing up a tour of me and Tracy Bird one time, and uh, I turned a thousand crickets loose on his bus. <laughs> we went to every bait oh shop in town. God. Oh, he was so pissed at me. <laughs> So good. I put grease pigs in the back of Kenny Chesney's bus. Yeah. I put uh, uh, chickens on the stage with him one time. Nice. And a whole bunch of them where the girls would come by, you know, where they usually lay roses on the front of the yeah. stage. I, I had the FFA get all kinds of chickens, and the girls would come by and look up at him and sit chicken. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's beautiful. Be creative, man. Yeah, I love that. I, I, we got to get into our, our pranking part of... Start uh, thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, be yeah. careful. Some people can't take it, yeah. and some oh, people yeah. retaliate really hard. I imagine. I think Laney probably... Laney will appreciate it. that. Yeah. Absolutely. I imagine I'll get it back if I start oh, that you, kind of prank absolutely. war. Absolutely. You got to be careful what you <laughs> <Yeah>. start. <laughs> Is that Lori Yeah, oh, I think so. Yeah, it looks like her. There. I ain't oh. seen her in a long time, so it's, you know. Miss Lori, Miss Lori. A, yeah, there she is. <laughs> oh, you'd probably call her Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Oh, yeah, good memories. Funny, man. Oh. Brother, I have sure enjoyed visiting with you and getting to know Same you. Same here, man. And I hope Thank we you. get to do this again. Yes. And uh, I look forward to uh, to visiting with, my, with our friend Carson very soon. We've yes, got sir. A lot of writing, yeah. Writing dates on my schedule coming up. Absolutely. I wish you good. much success, and Thanks, I, I hope I get a chance to run across and share the stage with you out there somewhere yeah. this year. We'd love to. That'd be great, man. Thank you so much for taking the time and having me on here. I hope we get to do it again sometime soon. Zach Top. Mm -hmm.